Welcome everybody to Falcon Plays the Descendant, episode number one. And how fitting is episode number one? Because this game is also one of those um, episodic or releases games as well. As you can see right now, we have access to episode number one, which is the Aftermath. And we have four more episodes coming soon after a little while here. This is actually one of those adventure games, kind of very much along the lines of something like a Telltale games, like The Walking Dead, or The Wolf Among Us, so on and so forth. So it's going to be an episodic release game. I've taken this out for a spin already for like, you know, maybe a couple of minutes just to get acquainted with the controllers here. And the game is actually quite on point. The animation, the art style is great. The voice acting, as you can probably imagine, in an adventure game is actually quite amazing for, you know, not so much of a top of the line, you know, AAA type of developers. So I'm actually really impressed with this game so far. So what The Descendant actually entails is, you know, I could explain it to you, but I believe that the introduction cutscene will do that. So you know what, as a matter of fact, let's stop wasting time and get into it and actually see what The Descendant is all about. Don't you take another step! You're not who I was expecting. The other guy got reassigned. I'm Mia, Mia Howard. Check your file. HQ should have confirmed a few hours ago. Alright. Heard up. It was 20 years ago today, scientists confirmed we could not reverse the damage done to the climate. Officials have now announced they will present their... Through greed and fear. An inside source... We destroyed our world. Human ...and ruthless. Looting continues as food supplies run short. This is thought to be the direct result of government officials announcing last week that food rations would... Then, we destroyed each other. Today's peace talks between the three superpowers broke down and left the world wondering what immediate effects this would have. As tensions now rise to a new level, never before experienced... Only the strongest nations had a hope of surviving the war. Tries to change the status quo, the resource war. Can't this thing go any faster? From seven billion people, only four thousand were selected to survive the end of the world. of humanity were cryogenically preserved, hidden in underground bunkers until the surface was safe. Centuries passed. The surface became safe. The bunker to find out why. 
HQ, HQ, this is Search. Go ahead, Search Team. We're at O1's outer gate, ready to blow it off its hinges when you are. Roger that. On my mark. In three, two, one. Feels like you're going home, doesn't it? Let's just get this over with. But if there was even a chance that anyone was still alive, the descendants or the janitors watching over them, then any risk was worth taking. HQ, HQ, this is Search. We're past the outer gate in the descent tunnel now. Watch that, Search Team. And Randolph? Yeah? What you feel out there? You know what's at stake. Two-man search team. Him, a VIP. And me, <laughs> a nobody. Expendable. Randall, if you... <sighs> HQ, HQ. Remind Donnie. Are we to take our time, or get those descendants out ASAP? That good enough for you? One gate down. One to go. The only obstacle standing between us and adding another 108 of humanity's finest to our ranks. HQ, HQ, we're at the inner gate. Please advise. HQ, HQ, do you copy? Shit. Think you can get us past this? That's why I'm here, isn't it? I'll see if I can get this long-range radio working. Just hurry up. Those poor bastards have waited long enough. Alrighty, so we're able to move around finally. So, so far, if you've noticed, um, we had one of those quick time event type of things, and then we had one of those choices where, you know, you get to either say something, you can remain quiet, and depending on whatever you do is going to obviously affect the relationship with certain individuals and probably change the course of the story as we go along over here. You, you move around just by clicking around, as you can see over here. Some objects are highlighted. Click around marker to interact with the objects so we can move forward here, and we should be able to interact with this cave -in. Huh. Wonder when that happened. That's true. Wonder when that happened indeed. Um, as you can probably imagine, I will be keeping quiet for the majority of this playthrough. Whenever there's any sort of dialogue going on, I don't really talk during that because it's more of a story-oriented game, so I don't necessarily want to, you know, harp in on that. But when there's stuff like this happening, we're just moving around trying to solve, like, some sort of puzzly type of thing. Obviously, I will be chiming in then. So right now we're supposed to go check out what's happening with this vault door over here. What about this um, Richard dude that we're with here? Jefferson, the senator. Piece of work, this guy. The last line of defense against the outside world. I need to hurry up and get it open. Now, so far, I've, I've enjoyed everything about the game so far. I mean, I honestly haven't been past this big gate right here, so... Um, the animations are good, the graphics are fine, the voice acting is really great. The main character that we play can sometimes sound a little bit overly dramatic, but that's kind of like a really minor complaint. Um, the Richard do that, Senator Dickhead over there, really, really good voice acting on that part, I will admit. So this right here has been rusted shut, so we're supposed to get this bad boy open over here. So I think we saw a toolbox over here, that's cool. Let's go ahead and grab this. Again, the puzzle elements, or at least not really puzzle elements, I mean, can you really call this a puzzle just going somewhere to pick up an item and come back and using it on a, another item? Not really too puzzly, really. It reminds me of like the whole Resident Evil quote-unquote puzzle aspect where people are like, oh yeah, Resident Evil has puzzles, and you're like, no, it's not really a puzzle. You just go somewhere, you pick up a key, you come back, and you open a door. It's not really too much of a puzzle now, is it? Computer requires power, of course. 
So let's see, we have our cable running through here, so we come down this way. Mind you, that wasn't a knock against Resident Evil, I grew up with that shit. Resident Evil 1 and 2, 3, Nemesis was good, 4 was I think like the high point, like where they made all the proper changes to Resident Evil. And then after 4, 5 came along, eh, it was still pretty decent, especially as a co-op game with like a couple of friends. Or a friend anyway. And then after that I really haven't played 6 yet. The spin-offs have been pretty decent as well, the Code Veronica games and... Revelations, but that's besides the point. I'm losing track of what's ahead of here, so we need some fuel. I do believe we have some fuel over here in our trailer. Gasoline, there it is. I didn't pick that up. Let's see, and if I'm right, I should be able to interact over here. There's a trailer. Let's check this out. We're only here to tell everyone it's safe to leave, but still, I can't help but feel unprepared. Uh, so you got a radio, you got some gasoline, you got like a backup generator. Maybe some wires of some kind. Can we talk to Randolph? Randolph's trying to get the radio working. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> ah, you dumb senator. That's what he's implying, essentially. Let's move up here. Vehicles right here as well. I'll try to interact with as many of these objects as possible. Piece of junk. Trust HQ to give us something that barely works. Alright, cool. So we have our gasoline. Let's come over here and fuel up our generator and get this gate open. As I mentioned, beyond this gate, I have no idea what lies behind it. I know there's like a little mystery in this game as well, some sort of like crazy conspiracy, but you know, I really can't speak on that too much, but it's kind of what I've read in the description of the title. The generator is running. Cool. Let's come over here. I would like if you could run in this game on occasion, I will admit. Walking everywhere this casually. This guy's got so much swag. He's like, fuck running, dog. I'll just walk everywhere. I think I got it. You waiting for a written invitation? Helmets on. Until we know what's happening there, we can't take any chances. What the hell? You're waiting here, Senator. We've got no idea what we're walking into there, and you're not exactly- What? I'm not exactly what? Alrighty, so, uh, you're not expendable, you're not a team player, you're a liability. Ah, let's keep him on our good side. You want to be a leader, don't you? Maybe even president. People need that, so you're not exactly expendable. But I am. Look, for all we know, it could be dangerous in there. Now, that long-range radio worked up top, right? Yes. It did. So you stay put. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Someone with far more to lose than me. Now keep your short-range radio on. If anything happens to me, you can easily get back topside and contact HQ. Can't argue with that. Alright, so we're back in control here. I'm just gonna try to keep this guy on my good side, you know, it, there's always multiple ways to kind of do these games, like, you know, you can take the asshole route, the good guy route. I normally always go with, like, the casual, like, you know, passive run the first time around. Second run, I try to just be, like, a dick about things, but for now, we'll just keep this guy on our good side. Let's see what's happening over here. Can I interact with anything? We have elevator, which seems to be out of service. Service elevator. Must have been used for moving cargo. Might be worth checking out before we get the hell out of here. I will keep that in mind. Let's see Arc 1. Well, it'd be shamed if you forced away into the wrong arc. <laughs> this guy, yeah, no shit. Good thing there's a giant zero one right there to tell you otherwise. So how long have I gotta wait out here? However long it takes to confirm the facility's safe. You were frozen for centuries. What's another hour? Fine. Whatever gets the descendants out of here. And the janitors. They're not the priority. Oof. 
So jan janitors looked over the the sentences as they were frozen. Gotcha. So the sentences are like the valuable individuals. Janitors are just kind of there to take care of them. They're basically the babysitter, you know. Safety notice. Might as well say a banal hope ye you enter here. Always wear the right personal protective equipment. Always exercise caution when using heavy machinery. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Decontamination. After getting into the facility, it was meant to be easy. Find the Ark's janitors, have them wake up the descendants, then get the hell out of Dodge. If only it was that simple. <coughs> You're, uh, you're lucky I didn't shoot you back there. What with your little clipboard? You been here long? Couple of days. Getting things set up. Almost everyone who got chosen is already here. How many descendants are allocated here? Uh, we got 108 so far. And this facility is something else, believe me. It's gonna be one of the government's most advanced underground bunkers. You know, once they finish building it. <laughs> Don't pull that face. It's a work in progress. By the time the construction team are done updating this place, it's gonna be like something from the future. Even the system monitoring this place, the equations are so advanced, it's... Shit, sorry. <laughs> I totally forgot. <clears throat> I'm Silas, uh, a janitor, same as you. I'm a physician, so it's my duty to keep the descendants alive and well. I'm Mia, but you already knew that. What about you? What's your area of expertise? Oh, okay, so... Let's go with uh, mechanical engineering, sounds good to me, man. Me? Um... Mechanical engineering, mainly. I guess your job, then, will be looking after the Ark itself. It's, uh... It's a big responsibility. Huh. Never thought I'd grow up to be a janitor. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. It's okay. It's okay. We're near a fault line, so we should expect little earthquakes sometimes. This place has been built to stand up to anything and everything Mother Nature can throw at us. I assure you. Ah! Fuck! No, no, no. This is really happening now! Mia, this isn't an earthquake. Are those explosions? All those people! We gotta go. Now! So you were a janitor too, right? Yeah. I made sure folks like you stayed safe and sound. Humanity's so-called finest. Donnie, the sacrifices you janitors made safeguarding the next chapter of the human race. Well, I am in debt to you, and the people like you. We all are. He had a habit of speaking like he rehearsed it. <laughs> ah, I could smell bullshit anywhere, huh? So it's pretty cool, we jump from what was happening when it first happened to obviously afterwards. Pretty interesting. The graphics are actually really quite amazing over here. It's pretty impressive. I got a hold E. Smashy, okay, smash the old E. And I should note as well, is it just me or does that Silas guy sound really familiar? For some reason he reminds me of the voice actor for the detective in Heavy Rain. You know the guy with the whole Matrix bullshit going on with the glasses and whatever whatever his name was. But he sounds very similar to that guy. Or at least he's got a voice that's very, very similar to me that I should be able to put a name to the voice, but I just can't right now. But it sounds so goddamn familiar it's bugging me now. Where are you now? Some access corridor. Everything's powered down. But the ARC systems are still running, right? Seems that way. Once I find the janitor's quarters, see if anyone's home, we'll know for sure. Man, it looks really awesome, actually. Oh, okay. Hate those sudden camera changes. Just trying to make sure we're just grabbing onto everything along the way here. Got a door. And. That's about it. Okay. Let's go check out this door first. First aid kit right over here. Yeah, check it out. Check out the door. 
Oh, okay. Another door. Cool. Randolph, you read me? Like an open book, pal. You find them? Yeah. You could say that. Was that blood? That nurse is totally normal, by the way. Once you use the anesthetic compound, the sickness should subside. In time. Okay. Gotta find out where the arc woke us up. All the cryotank bays look okay. It's been... If this is right, it's been three years. You should check the maintenance logs on the computer. Our cryotank's only open when something needs to be fixed. We need to figure out what it is. Check. Check the maintenance logs. Got it. <laughs> She's just done over here, puking her brains out after being cryogenically frozen for three years. Ah, oh, sure. Check the computer logs. You got it, pal. All right, guys. We're going to wrap it up here for this episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like to support. It really does mean a lot. Stick around for the next episode. We should have that up here pretty soon for you. And um, come back. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying it. I will catch you next time.